Welcome to Discover Library and Archives Canada, your history, your documentary heritage. I'm your host, Théo Martin. Join us as we showcase treasures from our vaults, guide you through our many services, and introduce you to the people who acquire, safeguard, and make known Canada's documentary heritage. Welcome to Treasures Revealed. In this new podcast series, we'll be showcasing certain items in the Library and Archives Canada collection. Each episode will speak to a LAC employee and highlight an item that they consider a real treasure in our collection. They may be rare items, perhaps unusual or valuable, or items with historical significance. Perhaps they will have a compelling or interesting story to go along with them. More importantly, all of them will showcase our vast and rich collection that is the shared documentary heritage of all Canadians. Now, on to episode two, Panatype Puzzle. Yeah, because it's unique. It's unique to us, right? For us, it's unique. We never had, and it's a treasure. I find a treasure because no one knew we had it, and there it was. And once we had it, it was like this exciting. Even though we don't know much about it, I think it's still a treasure because it's our only one that we know. Okay, hi, I'm Tanya Passofiume. I'm the uh, head photo conservator here at Library Archives Canada. I've been working here since January of 2005. What is a panatype and how was it discovered at Library and Archives Canada? Let's let Tanya tell us. So a panatype is a photograph on leather. The word pana, panotype, so panis is the Latin word for um, cloth. Well, uh, it's interesting. Well, let, can I tell you the story? Okay, this is my story. So a few years ago, I've, I'm doing the census on case objects. So case objects could be daguerreotypes, uh, which are metal, photographs on metal, one of the earliest types of photographs, or ambrotypes, which is glass, photographs on glass, or tin types, which is metal. And they were all put in these cases, meaning they were in these leather or plastic cases, sealed uh, um, in these beautiful, uh, like I said, leather or, not, or paper or pl- early plastic cases. And anyway, so I was the census. So we, bought it, we have about 300 of these case objects, and I just love case objects. Um, and I've trained a lot before I came to the library archives on case objects, so I'm really happy to look at all of ours. And you can kind of find fun things hidden in the cases. So I was working on this project, and in some of their, our containers, there was a, a container with six objects in it, so six case I- items in this container. And uh, I did the first five, and the last one, man... That one just looked too weird. And, you know, you see a lot of these over the years. And, you, you, you know, I'm like, that's not a daguerreotype. That's not an ambrotype. It's not a tintype. But what is it? And the thing with photography, which has been always interesting, photographers have always changed the processes, right? So sometimes you come across processes and you're just like, what did they do? What were they mixing to make that? And anyways, I put it off and put it off. I have a lot of work to do. There's 35 million photographs here at LAC. So I have a lot of work to do. So I just put it off, put it off, put it off, off. And finally, I said, one morning. Okay, let's just look at this. So I took it. I opened the case. It's, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a man sitting, a young man sitting. It's a sitter, and I op- I took it out. So we have special um, tools to take out um, the objects from case objects. So I don't recommend it at home, but we have this suction tool. I took it out and I looked on the back, and now on the back there's a piece of paper. And uh, it was kind of a cardboard kind of paper. And on it, it, you could read, someone had written, it was like cut off some, off some writing. And it said H-O-L. And underneath it had some, un- I couldn't really 
uh, figure out what the words were, but the last word was acid, and there's a line underneath it. So I thought, okay, that's interesting, but this doesn't have a seal, doesn't have a tape. So someone has either been in here already, and it's ov- it's it's common that people would change uh, in the insides of case objects because they're, they're quite old. Um, so you can't really trust what you find back there sometimes. But it wasn't sealed, so either it was never sealed, it didn't have any remnants that it was ever sealed. Um, so I decided to remove this paper. It was easily to be removed. And and there I saw it, and um, it's I saw it, and it was leather. It's the it was rough leather. It was not processed leather, and I immediately knew it was a panotype. I've seen these before, never here, and I thought this is really exciting. So I turned it around and I took off the cover glass, and I realized the cover glass was really dirty, and that's why I couldn't really see what it was. And there it was, this beautiful, beautiful image of a of a young man, and it's on patent leather, so it's kind of shiny, and it was in such good condition. And that's the thing too; these were made about 1853 uh, to 1880s, and um, they, in the books, when you read our books uh, and conservation books, it says it's hard to find a really good condition of one because the leather is deteriorated at this time. So, and then I and I did a little bit of research on panotypes, and I realized they're basically made like an ambrotype for glass. But what they do is when they make the ambrotype, the emulsion, they put um, alcohol and nitric acid, and that goes back to the piece of paper, and it said H O L alcohol, and acid. So maybe that paper really was there the whole time and that's part of the piece. So immediately I emailed all the archivists, photo archivists, and and they immediately were quite excited because they told me that that they don't have another piece like this in the collection. And in our system, someone had um, said it was an ambrotype, but it was a panotype. Unfortunately, we don't know who the sitter is, but it's an amazing uh, condition and it's our first panotype. So I think it's a big treasure and I, and I found it. <laughs> Panotypes were a bit of a trend between 1853 and the early 1880s. They were made by a method similar to that for ambrotypes. But instead of glass, a piece of cloth or leather was used as a support. What is interesting is that panotypes were made by placing drops of a dilute solution of nitric acid in alcohol onto an existing ambrotype. This was done to allow the photographer to remove the emulsion which contained the actual image from the glass support and place this emulsion onto a new support, such as a piece of leather. So it's, it's very complicated, and people have done it. I've seen, I've seen modern-day versions. Um, I mean, it's unusual to see it because who wants a photograph on leather? Like, it's just like, why would you want that now? And the reason they did it, one of the reasons we think they did it was because there was like daguerreotypes would be in cases, but they would be easily scratched if they weren't in these cases with, with glass um, and, uh, am- and ambrotypes is on glass. And if they were mailed, the glass would break, right? Uh, daguerreotypes could be, if they're not in the case, they would be bent. But if they're in the case, they wouldn't be bent in the mail. But uh, tin types would also be bent in the mail if they weren't in case because they're on tin. Um, so leather would not be bent in the mail. So I think that's why they started making more flexible supports. And now, you know, it kind of makes sense because it turned out we used, like, it, we got into polyester and nitrate negatives, and they were very flexible supports. So it's kind of interesting how the history of photography started that way. This panotype photographic process was presented for the first time in 1853 to the French Academy of Sciences by the firm of Wolf and Company. Instructions for the process were made available for sale by that firm for a hundred francs. Panotypes soon became generally known with many professional photographers making commercial use of them as evidenced in surviving advertisements and journal articles. Customers were interested in the process at the time because panotypes were believed to be more stable since they could not break because they were not printed on glass like ambrotypes, nor could they be easily scratched like daguerreotypes or bent like tintypes. We know very little about how the panotype process was developed and practiced here in Canada, but we do know that there were several prominent photographers using this process, including George Robinson Farden from Victoria, British Columbia. 
His images of portrait and views on patent leather were sent to the London International Exhibition in 1862, and they eventually became part of the Victoria and Albert Museum's holdings. Tanya tells us more about this census that she is doing on Lac's cased photographic items at Lac's Preservation Centre in Gatineau, Quebec. Well, I, w- I started it quite a few years ago um, because I wanted to learn more about our collection of case objects. And, it w- and I found that um, when LAC moved to this building, this new building, many, many years ago, uh, they made these uh, containers with the, with the case objects. And since it's been like over many, many years, over 20 years, I don't know how we've been here for many years, the, um, the boxes, the containers that we made uh, are not... Um, not up to our standards anymore. And so I had a whole project of uh, rehousing uh, the containers, rehousing the daguerreotypes and the ambrotypes and the tintypes. And in doing so, I was, I said, well, I, I should look at the, the objects. And many, we, I found a few that have original sealing tape. So I will not touch those because it is rare having original sealing tape, even though the sealing tape is... Um, is not functioning anymore. It's has, it has holes, or but we have amazing uh, conditions in our vaults, and I think it's more rare to keep the ceiling tape than to to destroy it. This is all, you know, conservation is kind of judgment call sometimes, and I and I kind of like the oldness of things, <laughs> which is kind of hard for a conservator, but. Um, uh, like I love tarnish on daguerreotypes, where some conservators don't like the tarnish on daguerreotypes. But um, anyway, so I was doing the census, and a lot of it is we have like dirty cover glass. It just needs a clean cover glass. Uh, and uh, in doing so, I'm looking at all the different cases because it was all manufactured there then. Like you could go out and say, I want this size. It came in standard sizes. I want this size. I want this case. I want um, this preserver, this mat. And there's like books out there. I, I'm doing research on. Uh, you know, who made that mat and who made uh, that case. And uh, there's not a lot of information, but there's quite a bit. Even the plates, the daguerreotype plate, you can, um, there's um, there's uh, stamps on them and you can identify like where that plate was made, even in the States or uh, in Europe. In Canada, it's, it's, it's interesting uh, because um, a lot of photographers from the States would come up and photograph people here. And so uh, there's a lot more information about uh, the American photographers. Um, but anyway, so I'm in this survey and we still like the other day, like I'll find a tintype in another container, like totally not in the correct container. So I, I really don't know exactly the numbers cut down right now. Um, and hopefully in this census, I'll, uh, I'll get those numbers. And I want to, and I just want to know, you know, different sizes we have. And, you know, these, these, these interesting, like a panotype, sometimes there's ivory types in there, like that were miss, um, uh, they're not supposed to be in there. Ivory type is a, is a photograph also on glass that's been painted on the back. Um, so anyways, I'm just kind of, um, searching because we have such a big collection and because I have all this experience from before coming to LAC, I just thought I would use that experience and kind of um, do a census. And But I'm easily distracted from this census because there's exhibitions and other preservation work uh, to do. So it's kind of my downtime. So that's why it takes a long time to do this project. If you're interested in learning more about these photo techniques, including panotypes, daguerreotypes, and tintypes, head over to Apple Books to download LAC's e-publication, Lingua Franca, a common language for conservators of photographic materials. This multimedia e-book is free of charge and the first resource of its kind working to establish a common language for photo conservation professionals internationally. Lingua Franca contains six chapters of multilingual definitions of photographic processes, condition issues, treatment options, preventative care, technical studies, and provenance. It contains commonly used terms which are briefly defined and illustrated with photographs, videos, and interactive features. We'll add a link to the ebook in the related links section in the show notes for this episode. We asked Tanya about the reaction of the other LAC photo archivists when she told them of her discovery. Yeah, they came to see it. I sent them pictures and 
I mean, they got it. They got how exciting it was. Other people were like, what, what do you mean? But uh, as soon as I said panotype, they were like, oh, yeah, I've heard about those, you know. And so it was kind of nice. I mean, the image is, is a, you know, he's, an, he's a handsome man, young man. Um, and unfortunately, they can't trace how we even have this panotype in the collection, which is kind of too bad. Um, so it's just a really nice example and a really good condition of a panotype. And I'm, I don't know, I, I, after that, I was, I kind of got more excited again about looking at these sense, the senses, looking at more of the, the um, case objects, because I wanted to find another panotype or something else unique, you know? Because sometimes you can find like hair, like hair jewelry in the back of them or notes. I've seen things about notes and, um, really fun stuff hidden behind these cases. So uh, it was fun to see the panotype. Today, discovering a panotype is rare, as their durability was very limited because of their inherently fragile qualities. However, the newly discovered panotype is on patent leather and is in excellent condition. The only difficulty here is that the original glass and the brass mat had begun to deteriorate. However, following some conservation work, the problem has been fixed. Our next step is to share this information with the public and perhaps to try and solve the next mystery. Who is the man in the photograph and who was the photographer? To help us solve this puzzle, you can head over to Lax Flickr Gallery. There, you will find an album called Treasures Revealed, where we have showcased images from this episode and from each episode in this series. We will update that album with each episode, giving you a chance to view the treasures that we will be highlighting. You can find the link to the Flickr album on LAC's podcast page. Thank you for being with us. I'm Théo Martin, your host. You've been listening to Discover Library and Archives Canada, where Canadian history, literature, and culture await you. A special thank you to our guest today, Tanya Passafumi. Treasures Revealed theme song provided by Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was produced and engineered by David Knox. If you like this episode, you're invited to subscribe to the podcast. You can do it through the RSS feed located on our website, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. If you're interested in listening to the French equivalent of our podcast, you can find French language versions of all our episodes on our website, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Simply search for Découvrez Bibliothèque et Archives Canada. For more information on our podcasts, or if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please visit us at bac-lac.gc.ca slash podcasts.